Since Joe Biden became president, the U.S. government has spent hundreds of billions of dollars fighting an undeclared war against Russia. No one in all of that time has explained really the purpose of this war, why it would benefit the United States or the world. Clearly, at least some policymakers are motivated by ethnic and religious hatreds. That's probably part of the real reason. But officially, no one has told us why we are doing this. But the net effect has been in part to send at least $75 billion to the government of Ukraine to fight this war on our behalf as a proxy. And it's not working. Two years in, the war is still going. The population of Ukraine has been decimated. Hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians have died. And the country itself is a mess. It's been wrecked as countries are in war. Russia is a far bigger country. It's got 100 million more people and far deeper industrial capacity. Ukraine can't win. Everybody knows that around the world. People are very clear on that. There's not one informed person outside the United States who thinks that somehow Ukraine is going to beat Russia, because it's not. But that is almost never said in the United States. In fact, on cable news, they tell you day after day, Russia's going to lose any moment now. Here's a selection. And we do begin with breaking news. Win, win, win. It's a word appearing in U.S. official statements in new ways and more than ever when it comes to Ukraine. Ukraine can win. Ukraine is winning. But let's not lose sight of how much Russia is losing in this war. Ukraine is winning. This is a tough fight. And it's not a foregone conclusion that Ukraine will win in the end. But right now, Ukraine is winning. And that's an important message for the world to see. Russia is losing this war. They are suffering horrifying casualties, the likes of which they have not seen since World War II and for very little gain. But right now, I think it's fair to say Ukraine has the upper hand. Ukraine is winning its war thanks to the enormous support we and, and others have provided. And we need to keep the pressure on Putin. President Zelensky described the time as the beginning of the end of the war. Does he have that right? Well, I think it's clear that Ukraine is winning. It's just Barry McCaffrey. They're liars and buffoons. And again, if you're looking at all of this coverage from outside the United States, you're laughing bitterly. This is the leader of the world? People who blithely tell lies, provable lies like that, that results in the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people and feel no guilt or shame as they do it? This is the beginning of the end of Russia, right? That last clip was from a year and a half ago, and they knew it was a lie then, and they know it even more now. But that has not stopped the push for you, the American taxpayer, in the middle of the total collapse of your own country, in the middle of an invasion by the rest of the world, tens of millions of foreigners coming here illegally, that has not stopped the press on the U.S. Congress to send still more to the government of Ukraine, another $60 billion. Nobody is for this. The overwhelming majority of American voters are opposed to it. Certainly the overwhelming majority of Republican voters are against it. The majority of Republican members of Congress have said they're against it. But the leaders of the Republican Party and, of course, the Democratic Party are completely for it. Here's the top Republican in the United States Senate, Mitch McConnell, the disgraced Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, saying that as he spends his final months in the U.S. Senate before retiring, his main goal is to send billions more to the doomed government and illegitimate government, anti-democratic government of Ukraine, and hurting any fellow Republican who doesn't agree with him. Here's Mitch McConnell. I finally thought it was time to go in a different direction. But I'm not leaving the Senate, and I'm particularly involved in actually fighting back against the isolationist movement in my own party and some in the other as well. And the symbol of that lately is, are we going to help Ukraine or not? Are we going to help Ukraine or not? Hundreds of billions of dollars, U.S. dollars spent fighting this war against Russia, which is not working at a time when our own country is becoming in parts literally impoverished. So history will record Mitch McConnell for what he is, an evil fool. Um, but Mitch McConnell is leaving the amazing thing is the people who might replace him have exactly the same views. Meanwhile, Zelensky, the leader of Ukraine, a country that canceled its elections, doesn't have freedom of speech or religion, is destroying a Christian denomination, this so-called democracy across the world. 
Zelensky is telling American media that actually the United States has not done enough for him. And so he is doing all he can behind the scenes to lobby our leaders and our media companies. Zelensky, by the way, newsflash, is directly in touch with the owners of American, some owners of American media companies to massage their coverage of this story. But that he's been trying to lobby the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson of Louisiana, behind the scenes. Here's Zelensky. Last month, you said, if we have American support, we will win. If we don't have American support, we will lose. It's true. Simple as that. Ukraine, but it, Ukraine will lose. But it's not. But it, but it's not simple. Yeah. Yes, of course we will lose. Not one day. Of course, of, co of course we will we will lose some of our territories and etc. But totally, it it it. Для нас це буде великий виклик. Як потім повертати все? Бо це великі жертви повертати. Повертати території це втрачати людей. And Charlie joins us now from Kyiv. Charlie, we know that President Zelensky spoke with Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, on Thursday. What did he tell you that his message was to U.S. lawmakers? Uh, well, John, in his words, he said that $60 billion aid package should have been approved yesterday. Oh, it should have been approved yesterday. Well, apparently he successfully made that case to Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, who has said the second the congressional recess ends, his number one priority at a moment when the U.S. is being invaded will be to send that $60 billion to Ukraine, possibly as a loan, not that, of course, anyone expects Ukraine will ever repay or be grateful for that money. They're not grateful now. So we sent a message to the Speaker of the House and asked him to come on and explain why when the majority of the Republicans he represents, both the voters and members of Congress opposes, why he would join with Democrats to do the one thing that Americans don't think we should do, which is send another $60 billion to pay the pensions of Ukrainian bureaucrats and fund a doomed war. Why are you for that? And of course, he hasn't responded. We also sent multiple requests to Zelensky himself for an interview to explain his position. Of course, he ignored that as well. There's not a lot we can do, but one person who actually serves in the US Congress and who is saying the truth about this question out loud is a member from Georgia called Marjorie Taylor Greene, and she joins us now to explain what she's doing in the face of this insanity. Congresswoman, thank you so much for coming on. Do we mischaracterize any, thank you any for of having that? Me. Do you think? I mean, no, from not at an all. outsider's perspective, it seems like Mike Johnson is working, the Speaker of the House, the Republican Speaker of the House, the supposed conservative, is working with the Biden administration to put the priorities of Ukraine above the priorities of the United States and to do something that his own voters don't want him to do. Is, is that true, do you think? Yeah, that's absolutely true, Tucker, because the details of the foreign aid package that we're going to be voting on next week when we go back to Washington, we're reading about the details in the news. Let me tell you something. Not one Republican member of, of our conference that I have spoken to has any idea what is in this foreign aid package that's going to give $60 billion to Ukraine. And that is even the leadership offices. They haven't heard from Mike Johnson on the details. We're reading about it in the news the same way the American people are. And it's outrageous. When you saw Zelensky right there on that interview talking about, oh, we're going to lose territory. Oh, we really need this money. This $60 billion should have been approved yesterday. Let me tell you, we are losing our country to the illegal invasion that's happening every single day at our southern border. And I am so pissed off about it because the American people are pissed off about it. And while our so-called Republican Speaker of the House is only working with Chuck Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries and Ukraine First, Mitch McConnell and the White House and Jake Sullivan, who he talks to on the phone all the time, we are angry and people have had it. We don't want $60 billion to go to Ukraine because as we slept last night, Tucker, we just went $40 billion more into debt. And that's because the interest in our debt is so huge and our debt is so massive. This is happening while we sleep every single night. So no, we don't want to send $60 billion to Ukraine. We want to put our country first. It's time to care about America. So, I mean, is it true, do you think that the Republican speaker would bring this up at when your recess ends and get it passed without the majority of Republicans, but with Democrats. Like, it, could that actually happen? Yeah. 
Yeah, because that's what he's planning to do. Here's what I've been told. Well, first off, let's go back, Tucker. The last vote that we had on any Ukraine funding was on September 28th of 2023. That was only months ago. And that vote, only only 101 Republicans voted yes for $300 million, $300 million to go to Ukraine. And that was because I pitched an enormous fit and said, take this money out of our Department of Defense. We should not be funding a foreign war in order to fund our military. That's completely wrong. In our military, their mission, as stated on their website, is to put our national security first. It's all about our national security. Fighting a proxy war with Russia in Ukraine, which is a non-NATO member nation, is not protecting America's national security interests. It doesn't protect the United States of America. As a matter of fact, that pushes us closer and closer to World War III. So we had that vote on September 28th, 2023. 117 Republicans voted no. That was the majority of the majority. Every single Democrat voted yes. Every single one. They had zero Democrats vote no. Our Republican Speaker of the House is planning to suspend the rules next week. He is planning to not put this bill through the Rules Committee. He's not going to allow us to do any amendments. Amendments are our way of changing a bill. Amendments are our way of putting our district's interest, who we represent, that's our job title, representative. It's our way of changing a bill. Mike Johnson is going to tie our hands behind our backs and not allow us to do that. As he brings that bill to the floor, every Democrat will vote for it, and a small portion of Republicans, less than the majority, will vote for it as well. And this this isn't a Republican speaker we have right now. This is a Democrat speaker in the, of the House because there is zero daylight between what Nancy Pelosi did last Congress and what Mike Johnson is doing now is our so-called Republican speaker of the House. It's 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 just an amazing thing to see. Will he take a call from you? I'm planning to speak with him on Friday, and I'm very much looking forward to that. It's just interesting that he's talking and a, and a lot of people in the media are talking. We haven't been able to talk to. But to Zelensky, who's a foreigner with his own interests, of course, um, but not an American and certainly not, we hope, uh, a voter in this country. But but all these people take calls from Zelensky and and are swayed by him. Is it a little weird to see an American Speaker of the House pay closer attention to a foreign leader or a number of different foreign leaders than he would to his own voters and colleagues in the House in our legislative body? Yeah, absolutely, especially considering Mike Johnson has um, completely changed his character in a matter of about five months after he has become Speaker of the House. Mike Johnson is a Christian. Uh, he he called himself a conservative, always has been. Um, he's he's a Republican member, but yet here we are after the minibus was passed just just almost two weeks ago in Washington, and now with the sixty billion dollars going to uh, a war in Ukraine, that Americans seventy percent of Americans do not support it. That's the most recent polling. Seventy percent of Americans and the majority of our majority of Republicans do not support funding Ukraine. Ukraine. People want to see a peace deal in Ukraine, not murdering more Ukrainians and more Russians. This needs to end. But no, Mike Johnson has has made a complete departure of who he is um, and what he stands for. And to the point where people are literally asking, is he blackmailed? What is wrong with him? Because right. he's completely disconnected with what we want. Do you think he is being blackmailed? I have no idea. I, I can't comprehend Tucker what radically changes a man? I mean, if we break yes. down the the second part of basically an omnibus, let's let's break that down. So Mike Johnson is is pro life, and the second part of the omnibus just less than two weeks ago, he funded full term abortion clinics, full term abortion clinics. He funded the trans agenda on children. I mean, how does that even happen from a Christian conservative Republican speaker? He did nothing for the southern border, did nothing to secure the border. And this comes on the heels of Lake and Riley being brutally murdered. This came on the heels of a video that was running on loop on social media where illegal aliens had rushed our border, ran over Texas National Guard, ran over Border Patrol agents in order to invade our country. These were military aged men, by the way. This, he did nothing to, nothing to secure a border. It's the number one issue in the world. 
He completely changed who he was, funded the FBI, gave him a brand new building, fully funded the Department of Justice that is persecuting everyone on the right and actually targeting our our presidential candidate uh, for for election this year, literally trying to put him in jail the rest of his life. We don't know who Mike Johnson is anymore. So there's no I, I can't comprehend it. Well, I, do, I have noticed just from living in Washington for so long that a lot of the top decision makers are lying about their personal lives. And there's something, you know, really amiss there. Mm -hmm. um, and th I would definitely say a Mitch McConnell uh, would be among those. And there does seem to be a connection between the creepiness of your personal life and the deception around your personal life and your willingness to vote with the other side. I mean, have you noticed this at all? Absolutely. And I think it's something that the American people are extremely aware of because none of it makes sense. Yeah. How do you become Speaker of the House? And, and let's look at that. It's basically like there's establishment Washington um, runs like a company. We could call it the firm. Well, Mike Johnson just got promoted to senior partner at the firm because he has been obeying their every single demand. He funded the military. He funded the military industrial complex and everything that they want done. He funded Biden's open border invasion. He funded the Green New Deal, the climate agenda. He funded full term abortion clinics, the trans agenda on kids. He funded every single thing that the firm stands for and what they're trying to push on the rest of the world. This is the agenda for the rest of the world. And they are not they're not hiding it one single bit. We saw the White House declare Easter trans day of visibility which is the biggest insult slap in the face to Christians all over our country. And that's the majority of Americans. They are not hiding it. How did Christian conservative Mike Johnson go from being a Christian conservative, voting that way, legislating that way, to the Speaker of the House that actually funds that agenda? I mean, what in the world happens? And you can't help but to question, what do they have on him? Is he being blackmailed? What would make this man do this? And I would argue there's something wrong because every single time I hear him open his mouth, he's complaining about how tired he is and talking about how he only gets three hours of sleep at night. Tucker, let me tell you something. I, and you know this too. I have worked my ass off like at times in my life where I'm training for triathlons, training for major competitions, working full time, raising three children. And at those times in my life, I was still able to get seven or eight hours of sleep, busy as can be. There's something wrong with your conscience if you're only getting three hours of sleep at night and you're tired all the time. And it's because you are you are going against your who you are. You're going against your inner self. You're going against the person that you are but you're turning into something else. And, and I think something is seriously wrong, not only with him, but many other people in Washington, DC. Man, I think that's such a deep, that's such a deep point. And thank you for making that. And to the question, and look, I try to invoke people's religious faith. I feel like it's personal, <clears throat> kind of not my business, but Mike Johnson has talked a lot about his faith as a, as a, as a Christian. And he says it informs all of his decisions. Mm -hmm. um, so with that in mind, here he is, funding a government in Ukraine that's putting priests in jail, putting literally putting priests in jail, banning a Christian denomination, you know, sending the army in to close churches. And he's also funding a war in Gaza that's killing Christians and blowing up Christian churches. So how can a Christian be in favor of using U.S. tax dollars to kill and imprison other Christians? I don't understand that. What is that? Yeah, you can't be. It's called a hypocrisy is what that's called. That's that that is completely against every every tenet of our Christian faith. It's against what the Bible says. You know, if we went to biblical principles, Tucker, biblical principles teach us to not be in debt because we are slaves to our debtor. But yet this morning when Americans woke up, they found themselves thirty four point six trillion dollars in debt and it went up forty billion dollars while they slept. So that's a, that is completely against our Christian faith, against our our principles that the Bible teaches us. But to fund the murder every single day, to fund a war, to pay for it, to continue it, to advise it, to have our CIA on the ground over there running that war in Ukraine against Russia, nuclear armed Russia. This is beyond this. You can't even call yourself a Christian if that's what you're doing. That is a complete yep. departure 
from anything that is Christian. And I would argue funding wars all over the world is a complete departure. Because here's the truth. They lie to us every single day, Tucker, telling us that Vladimir Putin and Russia is going to continue and march across Europe and take over Europe. That is a complete lie because that is not what we are seeing with our eyes. And that is not what history, recent history is showing us. And that is not the statements of Vladimir Putin and Russia. That is not what they are saying they want to do. I mean, like they care about Europe. They blew up their natural gas pipeline. <laughs> they impoverished Europe. They destroyed the economy of Europe. Mike Johnson and his friends. So last question. Is this actually going to happen? Will this funding go through with Mike Johnson leading the charge after recess? Yes. Everything that I've seen, everyone that I've talked to is this is happening next week. He's going to suspend the rules. He's going to bring it to the floor for a vote. Every Democrat is going to wear their blue and yellow lapel pins and flags and and scarves, and they're going to to vote to fund that. And we're going to have, you know, a percentage of our Republicans that actually support it will vote to fund it. And it it will pass in the House. It, It will pass in the House. It'll go to the Senate. Mitch McConnell will line up his little Senate soldiers and they will vote for it. And Chuck Schumer can't wait to pass it because... I mean, because Ukraine is everything, right? Ukraine is everything. Murdering an entire generation of Ukrainian men is the most important thing that they can do. And yeah, they'll pass it. And then Joe Biden will sign it into law. Yeah. Shutting down churches. Well, that's their agenda anyway. Is there any way to stop it, do you think? Mm -hmm. Um, If the American people, if the American people, let me tell you something, Tucker, and I can't make this point loud enough. The American people can stop our government. They can. When they, when they decide that it's important enough for them, when, when they realize that within 10 years, in 10 years, CBO has projected that we will be approximately $55 trillion in debt at the current spending levels. If everything stays the same, we're going to be $55 trillion in debt in 10 years. We are going to implode. If the American people finally decide they're tired of illegal aliens murdering them, they're tired of illegal aliens squatting in their homes, they're tired of illegal alien men raping children and raping women. Yeah, if the American people finally have had enough and say no, they can stop it. And let me tell you, Tucker, if the American people say enough of of sending money to foreign wars and foreign aid and funding the murder of people in foreign countries and in, uh, in countries we can't even find on a map most of the time. Yeah. If the American people say they've had enough of that and they're able to engage in this and stop spending all their money on all their hobbies and being disconnected and refusing to look at the serious situation that we're living in right now. Oh, yeah. The American people have far more power than I have, and I'm a member of Congress. If they literally hold our government accountable and stand up and say, enough of this, and I think they should throw out every single elected official. I'm not kidding. Every one of us should be thrown out. This government is a failure to the American people, and I'm angry about it, Tucker, because I'm a mom. My adult children and that generation and your kids and our grandchildren at the current current rate right now, they'll never be able to afford a home. They have no uh, strong financial future and they are going to be uh, living and raising their own children in a country whose government has screwed all of us over. And and that is the flat out honest truth, Tucker. And so, yeah, the American people could stop it if they really want to. I hope that lion roars. I will say, Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of the state of Georgia, thank you so much for that. Good luck. Thank you. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. The internet is crowded with interesting things that don't really matter. On TCN, we attempt to bring you interesting things that actually do matter, and a lot of them. Interviews, long form and short, videos, documentaries. You can find all of it on TuckerCarlson.com, and we hope you will. Free speech is bigger than any one person or any one organization. Societies are defined by what they will not permit. What we're watching is the total inversion of virtue. 